thank you for those of you coming this morning. Uh, I'll get back to our panel and, and give you a, a decent introduction to, to, to them and their feet. But first, I want to show you this picture of these wonderful young people I met uh, when I came to the Youth Summit uh, last Sunday. Um, it was a youth summit about, well, young people's media behavior, and I met these people uh, saying, I love radio on that T-shirt. So I simply had to take a photograph. And, uh, and I, then I, as a researcher, obviously, I asked them, why do you love radio? And uh, the girl in the middle, she answered, well, we were kind of forced to wear these T-shirts, weren't we? Weren't we? Uh, so, so that goes... Uh, and I thought that was fine because they are on a salary, uh, so it's a fine contract. Uh, just as me, um, I'm wearing these socks, you know, I have a salary too. Uh, <laughs> but uh, when it comes to media users, the business model uh, when is, is not that very uh, good and sustainable if we start paying our users to use our content. So our panel today, they're here pro bono, meaning that I cannot manipulate them or I cannot uh, force them to wear a t-shirt or to say anything that they don't mean. They're here to give us their frank and honest opinion. Um, before that, I'd like to, uh, to, to invite you to join the session uh, because I will make an interview. This is kind of a live focus group lasting 20 minutes time or so. And for the rest of the 20 minutes, I'll take your questions, uh, and you put your questions because it takes a marathon to run around with the microphone in this, uh, in this venue. So I ask you to put your questions um, through your laptop or your mobile phone just by scanning this QR code or opening a browser. It might be a private one. Uh, we won't steal any data. This is Swedish software. It's very safe and sound. And enter this code, and then you will be able to put questions from your point of view, what would you like to know from this panel? And not only you can put questions, you can upvote questions. And uh, I have a pair of extra socks to the one who puts the question that gets the most likes. Like the questions you would like me to take, because I, I'm sure there will be more questions that we are able to take. OK, now to our stars, morning stars. Welcome, Anna. Welcome, Natalie. Welcome, Wojtek. Uh, you were up early this morning, you told me. Um, when you get up in the morning, Anna, mm -hmm. what are your media habits? What media do you consume, if any? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question, because it's actually like what I try to do is not to open my phone right after I wake up because I'm trying to take care of my mental health and it doesn't really help me to open my phone right away. Um, but I usually, um, after, I don't know, after I eat breakfast, I open uh, YouTube and watch some videos from my favorite uh, YouTubers. You don't turn, turn on the radio? No, I don't. No. <laughs> I might listen to some music on Spotify. Ah, okay. Natalie, what about you? For me, I, maybe I'm a bit ashamed about that, but I always open Instagram probably like uh, uh, in the beginning, then Messenger to check if anyone was actually writing to me during the night. And uh, then I usually listen to podcasts when, uh, I don't know, I'm brushing my teeth or something. I really like to, I, I'm not a morning person. I really suffer in the morning. So I, I like to be awake and by something, it can be music, but uh, usually a voice is something that I really like to listen to. Mm. The, uh, let me know if this is too intimate, but do you check your Instagram, your messenger, before getting out of bed? Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, but uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah fine. What it actually it? takes me a long time to get out of the bed. So. <laughs> okay, and, and how do you listen to the, to the podcast in, when you brush your teeth? Uh, in the bathroom, do you have a speaker or is it the... No, 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 I have my uh, like, um, wireless uh, headphones, so I, I put the phone somewhere and I, I listen to them. I, it can be also like doing breakfast, cleaning. That's when I usually listen to podcasts. Okay. You said uh, you, you like to listen to a, a certain voice. What, what can you characterize the voices you like to listen to in the morning? Yeah, usually it wouldn't be some heavy topic I would, uh, I would choose to. I don't want to hear something uh, too tragic. or uh, I wouldn't probably listen to news. I would listen to something more like careless kind of content and voices, which are uh, like fun podcasts, I would say. Fun? <laughs> hmm. 
Wojciech, do you recognize any of these habits or are you totally yeah, different? From I'm trying to stick with what Anna is doing in the morning, but it's not always, I'm not always that successful in, you know, waking up and not using the phone. So sometimes I'm doing the same thing as Natalie. So I wake up and open an Instagram, just trying to stay awake while staring at the screen. <laughs> But yeah, then when I usually get out of the bed, I check some news, news apps, and then listen to some music. So what Use news apps would that be? Uh, it's usually Czech 24 It's our Czech uh, public like news, no, TV uh, app that you know um, just mm. concentrates on the recent news. And then for the international news, I usually check them on Reddit. Um, yeah, that's probably it. So Reddit, can you just say a little bit more about Reddit? Mm. Because checking Reddit in the morning, it sounds like, because isn't it an, a, a, a social media where you need to be active? Uh, not really, you can just join like a different channels basically, or yeah, and so you just join the communities where your interest is in. But they have a, like a section for news as well. You just scroll through news, and then you can just scroll through your feed, and you can just join the stuff that you're really interested in. There's people who are who share the same interest, sharing their stuff, and you know threads and. Mm. Okay, but no radio, no podcast, only music mm. in your ears. It depends on the mood, but like. Uh, I need to, when I need to start to do something, I don't really, like, if I'm listening to podcast, I really need to concentrate on it usually. It's not like something that can just go into my ear. And in that case, I would have just have to rewind all the time because, like, once I lose the um, concentration, then I don't know what is going on in the podcast. And then it's... Uh, Pissing me off. <laughs> it's interesting. I know Anna from what we talked about yesterday that you listen to podcasts too. Yeah, sometimes. I do. Um, Are you able to concentrate on doing other things while you listen to podcasts? Well, I usually listen to podcasts on my way to work, uh, but then when I start getting emails, I kind of have to turn off the podcast and start listening to music instead so that I'm able to actually answer my emails. And but then when I start to get tired at work or something, I might put on some podcast. Um, but yeah, some topics are really heavy and I can't do anything else with, uh, while listening. And also when I listen to some news podcasts, I don't want to do uh, anything else. So I really want to pay attention. So I usually, yeah, right now the podcasts I listen to, it's mostly like I can't do anything else while listening. Yeah. Natalie, what about you? You said you were brushing your teeth while listening to a podcast. Can you do anything, I mean, more complicated, multitasking? <laughs> yeah, it, what happens to me sometimes is that I actually put the podcast twice. So uh, sometimes I am uh, like aware after a couple of minutes that I didn't pay really attention, so I put it once more. But uh, when I'm brushing my teeth, I am usually really listening to podcasts when it doesn't really matter that much that you didn't pay attention. For example, when I would be going to work, I would put on news where I actually need to focus. And it's also sometimes that, for example, when I listen in Czech, then I don't need to pay that much attention. But if I put on some English podcast or maybe sometimes even like a German one, then I really need to po focus. Then I, I would listen to it twice, for example. Okay. Remember that when you count your numbers. Uh, some, some listeners, they, they take it twice, you know. So, <laughs> speaking about news, um, this is from the, the Reuters Institute, their digital news report last year, showing uh, an average of 12 markets, and it shows a rise in the population that says we get our news primarily from, uh, from social media, um, and it shows a decline in, in the population that says we get our news primarily from, directly from the news source. Uh, we are not going to see your feeds. That's too intimate, but uh, you have supplied us with these screenshots from your um, iPhones. And this is uh, a month ago, and they all show um, the apps and for how long time you spent on these apps. And there is a huge disclaimer here because it does not show all the podcasts and uh, the, the music you listen to, because uh, when the screen is off, it doesn't count. Um, 
and also you spend time on your laptops. So, but as a researcher, I'd say there's a significance here in your use of Instagram. And compared to what we've been talking about and the conversations we've had uh, at this summit or this conference, it's all been about TikTok. So this leads me to a question, why Instagram? You are heavy Instagram users, this is evidence, I think. What is it about Instagram that is so appealing to you, Anna? Um, well, I have to be honest. Uh, I actually use Instagram now only for work because I also work for, as a social media manager. Um, I stopped using Instagram a year ago because I really found myself being addicted. So, <laughs> um, and what I found addictive was that the algorithm just really worked for me and I don't know, like I kept scrolling and I always found something interesting. And um, yeah, I just couldn't kind of resist and I told myself I don't spend that much time there. Uh, but then I looked at those stats and I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm like losing so much time. So I kind of uh, deleted the app and it hurt for a month. I really found out that I spent way too much time there and suddenly I had all those like free periods of time and now it's been a year and uh, it was difficult for me to actually return to that for work because I found myself being acting like an addict like really being uh, like I would, I don't know, like being uh, addicted to alcohol so I was really scared to start using Instagram again so I, now I'm okay, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I think that it was because I was uh, watching or like following so many influencers and I felt like they were my friends. Uh, so I was just following their lives and I thought, oh my God, yeah, this is what I need to do, be, uh, what I need to be doing in my life. And yeah, it just felt probably like filling some void in my life or I don't know, it just worked for me, the algorithm. So this is hand on your heart. This is uh, yeah. this is only professional use. Yeah, really. Okay, it, this, is. It, it makes it even more interesting that hey, <laughs> where are the social media apps then? Because yeah. I guess Twitter's professional yeah. use too. Or yeah, like what, no, no, Twitter. That's my social media. That's app. your social. Yeah. Okay, that's what's what's appealing about that? Uh, well, I love Twitter because it actually um, like I follow a lot of media there, and uh, I'm the kind of person who really, when you showed the statistics before, I really use social media to get my news. And I sometimes the news, uh, like the media um, channels, they post uh, their articles. So I just read the headline and I don't even open the article. So that's how I get my news, actually. <laughs> um, so so, so you, you're part of this statistic we saw before? Yeah, yeah. I okay. definitely am. Like when I open our, uh, an article, it's, it's like, uh, it's an exception. <laughs> Uh, so Twitter uh, for getting all my information, for getting the news, even when uh, the war in Ukraine started, I only used uh, Twitter to get information. Yeah. Natalie, you're a student, but you already, already have a, have a full-time job. Um, is it also professional use, your Instagram? No. No. <laughs> Not in my case. Like, um, yeah, I, I do agree completely that it's extremely addictive. But um, for me, Instagram is mainly about getting touch with my friends. So I do follow influencers. I do follow news there. But the reason why I'm there is that I want to be in touch with my friends. I have a lot of um, or friends or people I know who, who are, for example, living abroad, so I cannot get in touch with them every day, but the fact that they are all gathered at this one social media, and then it's very easy to get connected because you don't have to think that much as when you're writing a t like tweet, it's uh, something you have to have some knowledge about, but uh, when you are taking a picture, you just share it and it's so easy, so everyone is somehow there, and for me, I, I really enjoy the fact that I can be in contact with people even though I was, I'm not able to get in contact with them physically uh, every day or every month. So, so where do you get your news from? Uh, 
I would say that my news, I actually do open the articles and wow. go, <laughs> I go to the website, but it's maybe, it's because it's part of my studies. Like, uh, I do study uh, politics, so I'm interested in that. I do get a lot of news from podcasts because sometimes I am also a, kind of a lazy leader, I, a reader, I would say, uh, and I do have to read in my work uh, on my computer or during my studies, so listening to podcasts when it comes to news, uh, I, I I believe you like that I don't have to read, but I do usually open the sources I'm used to. Wojtek, well, you're a chef, but you're considering a change in your career. Yeah. Um, you're a heavy Instagram user too, it seems. Yeah, yeah, especially on this week, I would say. It was uh, when I was traveling from Vietnam, so I was killing good time on the airport. Uh. But at the same time, it's, I know that I'm using Instagram a lot, and like sometimes I catch myself scrolling mindlessly, which is not good course and I agree with everything that the girl said but at the same time I think in our generation it's such a common thing to have an Instagram to get it in touch with everyone it's like really hard I think to, I mean it's not probably not that hard but it's more complicated to just delete the app and tell everyone that you're not gonna be on Instagram and when trying someone is trying to reach you they have to find a different way and at the same time you can find the kind of everything there like I use it to get my news I use it to you know scroll through memes <laughs> and uh, to get in touch with my friends to see what they are doing to see if I can join them while they're doing something you know it's, it's your Swiss pocket knife Instagram sort of yeah sort of are you the three odd one outs in the Czech Republic that do not use TikTok, or are we uh, completely wrong here when we talk about TikTok? Uh, all through the all the youth sessions are all about TikTok. Or uh, why is uh, TikTok not in, not in the? We might be too old for TikTok. Yeah, I, too old. <laughs> too old. Um, I haven't like I had TikTok for a while, and sometimes I do even open TikTok on my laptop. Um, but like I can't really watch people dancing anymore <laughs> uh, or like doing dances and um, sometimes I watch my friends recording themselves because it's yeah they some people in my friend circle they really got into the TikTok game and they started like doing vlogs and uh, they even post more on TikTok than on Instagram um, but for me it's also like this addictive part that wasn't, yeah, it wasn't good for me. It wasn't sustainable. <laughs> okay, I see there are questions coming in, so I'll, I'll run through uh, the presentation so that we can get to, to your questions. Um, yesterday, Noel Curran, who's the Director General of uh, the European Broadcasters, um, he emphasized uh, the importance of trust in media content. And uh, this slide shows uh, some, some stats on, on, on trusting different media platforms and what makes uh, people in the EU uh, click on an article. Uh, but to you, uh, what makes you trust in, in media content you meet? What, is, what, what characterizes uh, reliable media to you, Wojtek? Mm, it's hard to say. I really trust in our public TV and radio. But Why? Because they're giving you socks. <laughs> no, not really. I think it's a sort of tradition in the Czech Republic that we have really like as much independent as it can be. Uh, so the, you know, there's no ads. There's no. I mean, of course, there could be someone pulling the strings in in be like behind the scenes, but you can never really be sure. But I think it's sort of a. Tradition. I think I have it from my parents as well. You know, it's sort of like uh, trust, trustable thing for them. So I think I learned it when I was young. But hmm. Yeah. Okay. Logic parents uh, is a good way of, uh, I think, uh, explaining where does that come from? Because it's a really difficult question. Why do you trust the media? Do you have any thoughts on why, what media content do you trust and why? Yeah, for me, it's also a parent's habit. Like, I, I, I grew up watching Czech television every every evening with my parents, so I, I would say I have a high trust towards uh, the state media, but for me now, especially I'm following the news in what I'm interested in, which is politics or international relations, so I do actually even focus on the the people who are talking in the, in the media. So some 
I, I do trust the media, which I know are having uh, journalists or experts. I do maybe, I wouldn't want to say I agree with, but I consider expert. So Anna, do you recognize any of this? Uh, yeah, I agree with Natalia because um, I follow a lot of journalists on Twitter that work at Czech television or um, other uh, news channels here, and DVTV or Aktualnie CZ. And uh, yeah, I can, I feel like I can trust them, but it also come, it definitely comes from my uh, parents. Or when I drive with my mom in, in uh, in car, she actually listens to Czech radio, so like, that's the, the only radio I listen to, <laughs> and I trust that, so because of her, or it's the regional part of uh, Czech radio, uh, so yeah, Czech TV or Czech uh, radio, basically. Natalie, you told us that you kind of avoid hard news in the morning. This figure shows uh, the rise in news avoiders, it's also from the, the Reuters Institute, their digital news report. Uh, it is on the rise that people simply avoid news because it's uh, too too much. Um, do you recognize that feeling in of you that oh, now it's too much? I want to avoid news. Not only in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I definitely do avoid certain news which are um, tragic or sad. I, I wouldn't say I completely don't want to uh, hear about certain topics, but. Uh, for example, some topics which really uh, makes me very, um, I don't know, nervous or uh, sad, uh, which can be, I don't know, the climate change, it can be the war. Uh, I do, don't listen to the news every day because I don't want to think about it every day. Uh, yeah. And sometimes I would say also avoid news which um, I have I feel I am listening about them the, the whole month or two. Like for example now with the AI and chat GPT, I, I feel like I have already listened and uh, hear so many conversations about it that I just don't want, when I see it in my feed, I just skip it because I, I don't want to hear about it anymore. Oh, also so, 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 uh, overwhelming uh, on one topic, then yeah, you exactly. just sort of skip it. What about you, Anna? Do you any uh, time? Mm -hmm. oh, do, do you avoid news? Yeah, I sometimes I avoid news a lot, <laughs> and for me that's uh, my way of avoiding the news is not using Twitter. Uh, but um, whenever I'm at my parents' place and they watch the TV, I don't watch it with them because for me, um, the ch like the Czech TV, it makes it really depressing. And I actually started following uh, Radio Wave on uh, Facebook, and they have some like they have. I don't know, like sometimes I feel like it's cool news because it doesn't show anything about uh, the current politics state or something and it's just random facts like, yeah, people are gardening more or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, that's the news that I, if I want to avoid serious news, I try to look at like some fun facts or something like that and Radio Wave actually provides that, so that's fine. <laughs> Do you avoid news avoiding? Not really. I don't feel that much affected by the stuff that I'm reading online. And I'm always trying to like ask myself if there's something I can do about it, and if you know, just bringing the conversation in between your friends and people is the la least thing that you can do. Then you know it's important to still keep talking about the problems that are happening. So not really trying to avoid stuff. Keep talking about it was um, was the message from Andrei Taranov yesterday, um, who's a Ukrainian broadcaster. He was here giving a keynote, and his last message he delivered was, "Please keep talking about the war. That what that's what we could do. Uh, do you talk about the war with your friends or family, or do you discuss it anywhere mm. in, online?" Yeah, I think. In the beginning of the invasion, it was like much more of a hot topic between friends and like family as well. And after some time, like people starts to get a little bit dull to this, you know, uh, theme. But yeah, I've still I have a lot of friends who are like politically engaged or like you know interested in politics a lot. So there's a certain group of my friends where we have this conversation basically all the time, and they were watch watching like. Uh, 
like the news from the front line all the time and they they were spending their night like okay we're going to watch what's going on in Ukraine uh, life so, so how, how do you facilitate that discussion is it online or do you meet no them? just like when you meet with them usually go to have grab a beer and or like meet at their place just to see uh, what's going on if there's like some progress and what sources of news do you uh, and, or information do you uh, rely upon Mostly the Czech television, but like also I don't know Guardian and the Twitter and like the also there's pretty like different stuff on Reddit that you can get like directly from the Ukrainians and um, yeah so I guess these three would be. What about you, Anna, and 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 the war? Do you, is it something you discuss with your friends or family or? Uh, yeah, I do because. Um, like here in Czech Republic you can uh, really feel that we have a lot of Ukrainian people coming in and living here now and they're at school so it's like you kind of meet Ukrainian people as well and um, I actually get a lot of information about Ukraine from documentaries so um, I watch a lot of like there's been lots of movies right now about Ukraine and the start of the war so that's how I've been getting my information from there but I try to, uh, I avoid the Ukrainian news a little bit because it gets just too frustrating that it hasn't ended yet. Natalie, yeah. mm. yeah, you, you're in politics, so to say, uh, professionally. <laughs> <laughs> professionally. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm studying politics. Um, yeah, I, I'm definitely, I would say with what Anna said that it's very present in the Czech Republic. And I, like during the past year, um, I lived also in Austria and Belgium. And I would feel there is much less present than for us here because like Ukrainians have been our uh, neighbors and colleagues already before the war. And then many of them come with the war. So they are basically really, some of my friends are having uh, Ukrainian roommates or uh, my parents are having Ukrainian neighbors now. So I would say it's very present and also uh, just uh, because it's geographically really close, so we are very much aware that even the Russian tanks can come to Prague uh, very, very fast, and they did in the past. So uh, I would say it's present here, even though I, I do sometimes like to, or sometimes I do avoid the news because uh, I just like brutality of the war and the tragedy of the war is not something I want to have uh, thinking about like every day. But uh, yeah. This was the editor's choice. Let's see what the users uh, have to say, has to say here. So, which media? And this is uh, the one who, who won the, the socks because it has th uh, six likes, this question. Which media do you think are really old-fashioned? TV. TV? Newspapers. Newspapers? Oh. Yeah, newspapers. <laughs> hey, let's take the next one. Uh, how do you decide what podcast to listen? Is the key factor the host, the topic, the publisher? Well, how do you find your podcast and how do you choose? Yeah, I like, think, yeah. yeah, you can start. Yeah, for me, it's, uh, it will be probably the host and the format. Like, I, I like to listen to uh, when. Uh, it's like uh, really easy to listen to when there are, for example, two hosts having conversation about something. That's the one I would probably go to because when, uh, I don't know, uh, some podcasts are reading of something or are having kind of uh, different formats, which I don't, for example, for me, are not that uh, easy to listen to. So usually uh, for me, the main factor is it's the host and the format and of course then the topic. But mm, and, and can you characterize a good host? Yeah, uh, the good host for me is the one who actually is aware about the topic and knows about it. Some then ask the right questions, but uh, I really like to listen to to the podcast when the people are both like experts. That it's not that someone who is external and it's actually not a podcaster because someone who is podcaster is actually good at the job and doing it very well. Hmm. What about you, Anna? Mm. Uh, I wanted to say that I actually um, don't listen to podcasts on Spotify. I don't know why. It just, for
for me, Spotify is for music, and uh, Apple Podcasts is for podcasts. And when I go to Apple Podcasts, I scroll through the charts, and I uh, that's actually my habit now that I go through the charts and I pick the um, like highest listen to uh, episode, and I listen to that actually sometimes. Or when I see somebody, uh, some host that I like, and it's uh, up in the charts, then I listen to it. Um, yeah, so that's that's been my habit now, actually, just finding. Because for me, um, I want to explore some new podcasts as well, and this is the way how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Wojtek? Uh, for me, it's usually the topic that I will choose the podcast uh, from, and. But like, it's either I get it, the podcast recommended by someone, or and then I just go through the al like algorithm, like what does the Spotify recommends after that. But it's more like it's like hit and hit or miss. I think like sometimes it's actually good, like what the, the recommendations are, and sometimes it's you know not not for me. So I just keep scrolling through and trying different stuff and the host is also a big thing like I sometimes listen to like just a series of podcasts that has like seven episodes this is like a one story dragged through you know seven episodes or something which is really nice or I have some podcasts that I'm listening to constantly for I don't know 100 episodes already so, so do you pinch listening listen yeah if, if that's a, an expression mm -hmm. you keep it uh, going yeah, 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 some of them. But like, there's also some episodes that I'm not really interested in, so I just skip those and wait for another ones. So, what topics would it be? F uh, the longest, longest podcast that I'm listening to is about philosophy. I think it's, a, it's about it's like this guy. His name is Stephen West, and he's just talking about like philosophy, but in very simplified or not very simplified, but much simplified way than did you find in the book. So it's more easy to understand, I would say. If you should define a ratio on uh, foreign podcasts and uh, domestic podcasts, uh, Czech and international podcasts, what, what, what would the rate be for you that you listen to? Uh, it's half and a half. Half and half? Yeah. I think for me it's 70% the Czech podcast because I, I really like them, they're really good. <laughs> I mostly listen to English podcasts. Mostly English? Mm. Okay. Well, right. not English, but English speaking. Let's see uh, here. What about live broadcast? Why aren't you thinking about turning on the radio for, let's say, a breakfast show, host talking in a studio, having fun? Why don't you? I, I actually don't know how to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know how, how how to put on radio or what what kind of device should I use for that. No. Okay. <laughs> there are people in the audience that can tell you afterwards. I'm sure. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> well, I and actually I, I actually do have the app my uh, my radio. It's called uh, like my my um, and I sometimes like or you can also put it on on laptop. <laughs> 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 but. Um, yeah, we were talking about it yesterday with uh, Wojciech that why would we listen to something we can't choose? Like, we can't choose what they're talking about. Um, and I I think I haven't found, uh, like, a breakfast show, or maybe there is some, and I don't know about it, like, that would actually have some topics that I would be interested in. Like, the only breakfast show I know it's on uh, Evropa and it's just stupid jokes and I don't want to listen to that. So, um, uh, yeah, so I, I wouldn't even think about that because I can pick what I want to on Spotify or on YouTube without uh, ads because I pay for that and on some radio I would have to listen to ads. Are there any producers from that specific morning show in the audience? No, good. <laughs> but what about you? You, you? Yeah, it's the same for me. I think like it's. Why I don't get the concept of why would I listen to people talk about nothing? Just you know to listen to people talk and make like jokes that I don't find funny mixed with the music that I don't listen to. It's not a you know enjoyable morning for me. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I remember the last time I actually listened to live radio. It was like a month ago, and it was because it was there was it was an interview with my um, 
like uh, with a bass player from my favorite Czech band. And what they did is that you could ask questions live and that actually made me turn on the radio because I was like, I want to ask him this question. <laughs> so I turned it on and he answered my question. So I was really happy wow. about that. Yeah. So, so how did you find out that there was a sh uh, live uh, show you wanted to hear? Yeah, I saw it on, on the band's Facebook. So I saw that on uh, on Facebook that okay we're we're gonna be on the radio in an hour and I was like okay I'm gonna put my alarm on and I and I okay and I did that <laughs> <laughs> okay let's let's see here uh, that's one more why no radio we have had that one um, uh, you have already touched a little bit upon this but I I think it's it's, it's interesting how much effort do you put to get out of the algorithm bubble to get another perspective on some topics? Because it seems that you are f um, following what your friends are following, but are you very actively, any uh, time, trying actually to, uh, to get out of that bubble and seek something completely new? I sometimes do try that, that I try to say, say tell to the algorithms that I don't want to see what is showing me. But it takes a lot of effort, and I wouldn't say I'm that successful to getting out of my bubble. I, I am very much aware that I really live in my bubble, so um, it's hard to to get out of the algorithms. But sometimes when it really shows me something like completely all over again, still the same thing, I'm I'm just telling it, please don't show show it to me anymore. So is that is that also a way of? Um of uh, teaching your algorithm, hey, I want this, I don't want that. Yeah, yeah, that's also because um, I was interested in politics of uh, regulation of algorithms, so I am in a way a bit aware how it's trying to manipulate me, but even though I am aware of that, it's doing this, uh, and I try to like uh, learn it not to manipulate me in the way I, I don't want to, it's just, it's really hard battle, and sometimes I give up. You're on Twitter. Getting mm -hmm. used, I mean, that's an algorithm. Yeah, uh, well, Twitter bubble, actually it? changed a little bit since, uh, well, a little, uh, a lot <laughs> since Elon Musk bought it. Uh, so there's like two parts of Twitter feed right now, and it's uh, only the people you follow, and then it's like recommended feed. So there's actually a lot of a lot of tweets that I don't agree with, and they're trying to get traffic, and they're trying to get people angry and answer, and yeah, so right now I feel like I'm seeing a lot of people uh, like being on a total different side or political poli political side than me, and yeah, it's been interesting, but I have to like turn it off to the people I only follow quite a lot because it gets me angry, yeah, so um, the way how I, how what I do is I just talk with my friends, my family, because we don't share the same bubble. Uh, so we just talk about what kind of podcast they listen to, and then I try to listen to that as well. But I probably don't yeah, put too much effort into getting into a different bubble. No. Reddit, is that controlled by algorithm, or is it actually the users defining it's um, more or about users and the moderators uh -huh. what they let to put on the you know, thread or not so but the, the algorithm is mm, it's also affecting what you're being shown so if you're like I don't know in some sort in some community or some yeah where you're like watching a lot of stuff or like seeing a lot of the content from that uh, community then you're getting that as the first thing that you see when you open the app, but at the same time, it can like if you scroll through it, you get everything what you joined uh, to throughout, you know. So this uh, breakfast show is coming to an end. Um, will you be here in the break and maybe a little more time if someone in the audience wants to to come to get even more intimate with you <laughs> and your media habits? For how long are you here with us today, approximately? If you are. Like 10 minutes or something. <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> you have to be quick. <laughs> you have to be quick. We know that, you're, you're the young. But you'll be here in the break. Yeah. It depends on what, what they are serving on the break. It depends yeah. <laughs> what they're serving in the break. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, I mean, you, 
you, you deserve a sal salary, but, but that was not the contract. <laughs> and I, I'm so happy, and I am also so happy that you contributed with the, your questions. And I think you, you deserve a huge applause for coming here and sharing uh, insights of your media habits. Uh, to me, it's been uh, really an eye-opener, and I hope to you that you've, uh, you, you, you have a lot of takeaways uh, to, to go back with uh, a huge applause to our uh, youth panel here. Thank you. I was absolutely fascinating. I mean, I'm really grateful to you coming here so early in the morning. I learned a huge amount and, uh, you know, some of it very scary, uh, but actually important to know. Thank you. Fantastic start. And uh, I think for you in the audience, well worth getting up early for that panel. Thank you very much indeed, guys. Fantastic job. So, um, most important message probably this morning is there's loads of coffee upstairs. Uh, coffee is free, unless you want the, uh, you know, the posh coffee. Uh, ten minute break, and then we're going to have in here um, a, a fantastic presentation from Grant Blackley from Southern Cross Osterio about uh, how you uh, scale your business. And then Dennis Clark, the legendary Dennis Clark from iHeartMedia with a load of fantastic ideas on how to make your radio station go from good to great. Enjoy your coffee. See you in ten minutes.